what's up you guys the curious owl here and today i am doing the book lover survival tag so this was a tag that was done about a year ago and was created by penguin teen for this big sponsorship that they were doing for the release of a map of wrecked girls which i actually have and i really liked it a lot because i loved this idea for this tag because it, you're basically having to pick between five to eight books that you would want to bring with you on a deserted island basically like your top five to top eight favorite books. And I'm gonna make this a challenge for myself and pick five, but I'm fairly certain you guys will know which ones that I'm going to pick because they're books that I talk about all the time. And if I didn't pick these as my top five, I think there would definitely have to be something wrong with me and you'd have to make sure that a doppelganger did not take over my life. This is in no particular order of what is my most favorite. This is just the ones I'm thinking off the top of my head that I know for a fact I would want to take with me. And the first one is probably not a surprise and that is the Beautiful Creatures series by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. This is my most favorite series. One of my most favorite series of all time. It is the one that really got me into reading young adult literature when I was in high school and I just fell in love with it and the relationship between Ethan and Lena is probably one of my most favorite relationships that has built over the course of a series. The next series I would want to take with me is the Morganville Vampire series, which I'm also doing a reread series of right now. The biggest reason that I want to take this series is the fact that it has a really special place in my heart because this was a series that not only I fell in love with when I first started it and had really grown to love it and honestly had gotten me really into the idea of vampires when I was in high school, but it was a series that I started reading with my grandmother. I don't even know exactly how we found it nor how we really got into reading it together but it was one that she and I really loved a lot and had just found so much appreciation for that with every book that we read we just grew to love the story more and more and we would talk about it after we would read one of the books and it was just a really good bonding experience with me and my grandmother and it's really had a special place in my heart for years because of it and probably will continue to be. The next series that I think I would want to take is probably the Lord of the Rings series and The Hobbit. I'm combining those two because they're all by the same author by J.R.R. Tolkien and the reason is because I think this too, a lot of these books are, I'm talking about I read in high school and really just kind of shaped the way that I read now and I feel like that's one that you would have to take if you're any kind of a fantasy fan because of the fact that this is the series the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings that really started everything for the fantasy genre because of the fact that it was something that when it came out was so outside of the norm and it basically just sprung so much inspiration for other high fantasy stories and every high fantasy story you read is somehow connected to the Lord of the Rings because of the fact that it pretty much set the groundwork for things like world building and things of that nature. And I just think that it is too important to me specifically to not take with me. The fourth book that I think or series, you know, that I would want to take with me would have to be the Harry Potter series by, J by J.K. Rowling because obviously it is one that I remember growing up with when I was in like the fourth grade. It was one of the first books I think I really remember getting super involved with when I was in the fourth grade. And at that time I had read a lot of different books over the course of time. Like I read a lot of biography books. I read a lot of those um, like historical diaries of different individuals over time. I don't even remember what they're called, but I do remember that Harry Potter at the time when I was about in the fourth or fifth grade was one that I just really found a connection to and it just really sparked a lot of my reading because I was always an avid reader, but I think that Harry Potter just really hit it off for me. It really just made it more apparent how much I enjoyed reading and continue to read. And after having finally read Deathly Hollows for the first time in 2018, I just really found so much appreciation for the fact that I loved the story, I loved the characters. I don't necessarily love the fact that it wasn't as inclusive, but at the time I think that it was released, it definitely was something that had set it apart, set itself apart from the rest of the reading world. And the last book I wanna mention that I think is most important for me in terms of how I am now after having come out in August of 2018 is more Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. This is a book that just really identified with me in so many ways. It really helped me understand that something that I had gone through when questioning my sexuality was 
totally valid. It basically showed me that the questioning and the constant back and forth that I had growing up with understanding my sexuality and understanding what it was I was attracted to was totally okay because I spent so much time constantly going back and forth with I'm straight, I'm not, and then thinking that at some point I was asexual because I couldn't really find any kind of enjoyment in any sexual activity. And then realizing that it's not that, it was more of the fact that I love everyone and am attracted to everyone that it was almost kind of hard for me to understand that because I didn't think that that was a thing. I didn't think that you could be attracted to all kinds of different people and not really give a crap about it. I always thought that it was something that you either had to be attracted to males or females or both and that was it. You couldn't be attracted to anyone that was different from that. And this book really made me understand that that's okay to have that kind of a mentality and understand that you can be attracted to anyone you want and it shouldn't matter what other people think. And for the longest time, I was just so concerned with how people would think of me if I was to come out as pansexual. And so this book just really did a lot for me with understanding myself and I think that it's so important for me that it would have to come with me on a deserted island because this book basically helped me come out and I couldn't be more grateful for it and for Adam. So anyway, those are the five series or slash books that I think I would want to take with me on a deserted island. And a lot of them, like I said, you guys might know because I've talked about them for a long time or I've talked about them numerous times on this channel, but they're all, they all have very special places in my heart be for one reason or another. And I would love to know what you guys think you would take with you on a deserted island and why it is that you would take certain books with you because I love understanding why it is that people love the books that they do and what is it about them that really makes them understand themselves or about writing or anything like that. And as always, if you guys did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already and you'd like to be, hit that button down below and subscribe to become an owlette in our flock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys.